Hey, what's up, people? We've got a keyboard, although at the moment it doesn't look like a, a complete keyboard, but that's only because I've already removed all the keys off the switches, and put them in this little tub. So those are definitely not the issue. And so what are we doing today? Well, this keyboard actually belongs to one of my brothers, and he asked me if I could look at it. And what's going on is that sometimes some of the keys uh, don't respond. And as you can imagine, that can be completely aggravating, especially when you're uh, trying to do something that requires the use of the keyboard and you press, you know, some key and whatever function that's supposed to uh, provide just doesn't happen, whether it's a letter or, you know, like one of the other function keys. So it appears to be somewhat of like an intermittent issue. And I have not actually done anything to it other than remove the keys and pop off the bottom cover. And you can see there. So... I thought that maybe the issue may have been uh, like corrosion related or something. We can see that there's some spots where it appears that there's like some sort of like discoloration looking stuff on the board, but it doesn't appear that it's it's corrosion. Looks like maybe there's just like some areas where there's sort of like a bit of leftover res residual flux uh, because it doesn't look like the traces are damaged. And some of these traces are like really, really fine. So I was actually kind of concerned about that, but I don't think that's the issue. And to try to uh, get a good idea of what was going on with the keyboard, I tried to look up a some sort of keyboard testing uh, application online. And I came across this uh, keyboardtester.com where you can uh, go through and like press all the buttons on the keyboard and they will uh, light up depending on which one you press. So, for example, I'm going to start uh, up in this upper row beginning uh, pushing with uh, escape. So I'm going to push uh, escape. F1, F2, F3, F4, or I skipped F4, but F5, F6, 7. Uh, I'm skipping uh, keys here. But as you can see, right at this moment, it looks like all the keys are working properly. I'll go through and push every single key on the keyboard, and we'll see that for the most part, like everything lights up, except for like the control and the shift, I believe. Like those don't remain green, but we'll be able to see that they are functioning. Okay, so I went through and pushed all the keys, but as we can see, the control, that doesn't remain on, but we can see that it is uh, responding, as well as the uh, shift keys, and also the keys over on the side, uh, the plus, the minus, and the enter, they don't remain on, but they are responding, so it looks like the keyboard w would be working totally fine. There are a few keys that are currently problematic, such as the end key, if I kind of push it, you're not going to be able to see this, but I'm just going to right there it's like here let me uh, turn on the sound so i'm just pushing it once right there it did not respond at all actually i think i need to click on this again there we go so if i push it once you can see that it sounds like multiple clicks as if i'm pushing it multiple times but i'm really only pushing it like once so i'm going to push it again and i let it go and you heard like a bunch of little clicks so the button itself is working except that it appears that maybe there's maybe tarnishing or something inside that's causing it to bounce multiple times. And at this moment, it's responding once per click. So seems to have gone back to normal. The Z was actually acting up at uh, just recently also. That seems to be working fine as well. So I think the thing is that the keys, uh, while they do work, after it's been sitting there for a while, some of them uh, will stop uh, responding properly. And so they might not respond or they might only respond after like pressing it a certain number of times. So the issue seems to be primarily a contact issue. Now, I don't know why they would have done this, but you can actually change the sound that it produces when you press a key. If uh, you don't like to click, you can either completely disable it or you can select Josh. No clue why they would have done this, but basically every time you push a key now, it's, it's just going to say Josh. All right, so what are we going to do about it? Well, I think <laughs> pretty much every switch on this keyboard is going to have to be uh, opened up somehow and possibly uh, cleaned with like contact cleaner or something. The thing is that I can't, it doesn't appear that I can just pop off each uh, switch without uh, desoldering it because it looks like <laughs> they're all soldered to the, to the board. So that's going to be a bit uh, time consuming. But what I'll do is I will actually just remove one for now. We'll see how it comes apart and how we can clean it. And after I do that, then I'll probably just go through like off camera and just clean every switch on this keyboard. And then hopefully after that, everything should respond correctly. 
and the uh, keyboard can be reassembled and, and put back into Josh, service. Josh. Oops, pushing Josh. So I'm going to go heat up the uh, solder sucker. We'll pull off one of the switches and we'll see what we're dealing with. Well, that kind of sucked. The switch did come off, but one of the tabs on that side just completely broke, even though I didn't push on it very hard or anything. So those uh, basically retain the switch to this uh, metal plate that all the other switches are mounted on. But removing the switch itself was actually really not that bad. You can see that it's just got a basically a light pipe that the LED that's on the board itself shines through so that you can see it from the top. So this looks like it's, how is this? Is this a sealed unit? No, it's got small tabs that looks like we should be able to open up. Yeah, so that comes off and this one should also open up. So it looks like actually we should be able to open these up without removing them completely. I've never actually worked on a mechanical keyboard, so I'm kind of discovering this stuff as I go. But that tab that broke off is part of this same tab, so it looks like it's actually not going to happen regardless because there, there's like no way to pull it away from the uh, case of the switch due to the fact that the metal's going to uh, stop it. So either way, I think we'd have to desolder all these switches regardless. And so inside, there's just a spring, and those are the contacts themselves. We're going to have to get the microscope. <laughs> in here so we can actually uh, see all the stuff inside. So we've got a close-up of the switch, and the way that these work is totally not the way that I thought they were going to work, but we can see that the, the cap itself, the one that, or the actuator, has this sort of like a cam surface, and it's got two of those. So what those actually do is that when the key is not being uh, pressed, this sits in inside this uh, case, like that and it's holding the switch contacts open as we can see on those two contacts so when you actually push this actuator down it clears i can kind of get it right there but basically what it causes or it does is that it allows those two contacts to come together so the actuator itself does not push the contacts into each other it just allows them to come into contact so where we're getting contact issues is between uh, these two surfaces let's see if we can zoom in on that and see what the surfaces look like all right so that's what those look like we can see that there's looks like there's a tiny little area uh in the middle of this uh, little bump where it looks like it touches the bump on the opposite side so I think what I would have to do is go through with, I would take maybe like a, like a little sheet of paper and just stick it in there. It should be abrasive enough to clean anything that's on those contacts. But the problem is that they're probably going to get tarnished again eventually. So I'm wondering if maybe I could go through it with a, like a similar little piece of paper and maybe like apply a little bit of dielectric grease on them. But then I, I, I don't know if that would work because then if like some of that grease kind of causes the two surfaces to not touch each other, then that would be another issue. You can see that it looks like there's a little bit of grease on the surface that the actuator slides on. Okay, so check this out. This is the same switch that we were just looking at under the microscope, and I've cleaned it, and we're going to see what this actually looks like resistance-wise on the multimeter. And I'm not going to bring it up on the uh, corner of the screen because it's going to be uh, slower to update. So we're just going to look at the screen directly. I have this in continuity mode so that it'll beep when we push the button. And so check this out. If we push the button now, we can see that it's got very low resistance when it makes contact. So this is really good. This is what we would want. However, on the side, I've got another switch that I pulled off. And you can tell that this is a different one because uh, both of the tabs are still intact. I have not taken this one apart just yet. But if we check the resistance on this one or continuity, when we push it, that's really high and it should not be that high. So you can see that this switch is definitely not making very good contact. And if we wiggle it around, you can see that it, 
it kind of changes there. So now we have a little bit lower resistance, even though I'm still pushing the button uh, just the same. So it, yeah, there we go. So you can tell that those contacts are definitely not making very good contact. So I'll show you what I did to this one to make that contact resistance extremely low. And it's basically what I'm going to have to do to the rest of the switches on this keyboard. So first of all, we're going to open it up and I'm just using the same pick that I was using to open the other one up. I'm just gently prying up on these tabs. I don't want to break them. So just little gentle nudge upwards and outwards and the cover comes off. So uh, really the only part we're interested in is this. So then what I did is I've got this piece of paper. This is just plain like printer paper. And I soaked the end with a little bit of contact cleaner. Like it's just enough for it to like absorb into the paper. You can kind of see that it's shiny. So I'm going to do this in real time. I'm just going to run the paper in between the contacts like that. Kind of work them almost like a, like a file. And that should be good enough right there. And as you can see, it looks like there's a little bit of junk on the piece of the paper or on the end of the paper. So that's like stuff that was probably in between those contacts. And I'm going to do the same to the opposite side. Just like that. So the little tiny bit of lubrication that's on the paper should be enough to uh, lubricate those contacts. I don't want to like soak this entire thing in, in a contact cleaner. So I'm going to put this actuator back in place and let's go and put the cover on. It goes like this. There we go. Clipped it back in place. Let's go ahead and bring the multimeter back into the shot. And let's see how much of a difference just that little bit of uh, cleaning made. So got both clips on those pins and here we go. So <laughs> totally drastic difference there. So, yep, that's what we're going to have to do to every single one of the uh, keys on this keyboard. And just to show that not all of the keys are really bad, here is uh, another one that I pulled off. These are the two that I've already uh, got going. This one is not as bad as that other one that I showed you. You can see there, but the resistance is not as low as the other two. So even though some of these are not that bad, I think it's going to be best to uh, just go through and uh, clean them all out um, and uh, clean all the contacts out so that none of them are going to have any issues like anytime soon, hopefully. And just to make the process go as quickly as possible, I've already gone through and pulled this solder out of all of the pins that are uh, holding a switch down. And I can actually lift the switches up on the opposite side using one of these plastic pry tools. I can lift up these switches by just kind of prying. It's a little tricky. Sometimes some of these are a little easier than others, but if I just sort of like grab it from this lip and try to work my way around. Okay, I think two pry tools works better, but there we go. So I got it out and I didn't break the little tabs on the sides. Okay, I've got all of the switches removed from the board. I've got them sitting in this pile and a few of the switches unfortunately lost the tabs. Uh, not very many, but they're still good enough to uh, put back together. So I think maybe I'll identify which ones that lost the tabs and I'll put them somewhere where they're least likely to be used, like maybe the function keys. And with this thing all bare, I kind of want to see what the LEDs look like. I mean, not that it's going to be anything crazy exciting. So I've just got the connector on the cable plugged in. I'm plugging in the other end to a USB port. So <laughs> there you go. All right. I got all the switches cleaned up and I separated the ones that had broken tabs from the ones that didn't have any broken tabs. And if we just kind of select uh, like one switch at random, from this tub and we check the contacts on it. Let's, well, first of all, I'm just going to uh, uh, null out the contact resistance between the two probes. And now if we check the switch itself, you can see that <laughs> it's uh, way better than they were. So as I was going, I kind of just at random like picked out like a few of the switches just to check them. And yeah, some of them were pretty bad. Some of them were not that bad, but yeah, it's, it's best to uh, just go through and uh, clean them all anyway. So now all of these are ready to be uh, repopulated onto the keyboard. So I'll do that and we'll be right back. Oh yeah. And one more thing I kind of forgot to mention is I sort of changed up my strategy when cleaning the switches. 
Instead of using one long piece of paper like I was initially going to do, I ended up just cutting a bunch of smaller square rectangular small little pieces that I could grab with the tweezers. And then I could take these and kind of put them in between the, the contacts and just kind of like rub it around to try to clean them up as best as I could. And as you can see on all of these, there's like quite a bit of like staining. So there was definitely stuff on those contacts and hopefully now uh, this will be uh, much better now that they're clean. And we are ready to uh, test it. So I'm going to uh, plug in the uh, USB cable and it should light up like a Christmas tree once again. There we go. All right, let's go back to the uh, keyboard tester. And there we are. So uh, let's just go ahead and verify that all the keys are still working and that I didn't accidentally forget to desolder or solder something because I'm pretty sure I got everything soldered back on. So let's test the letters real fast. Oops, I still have Josh on. <laughs> Okay, so all the, uh, what, the M, oh, it didn't register M, but we see that it did get it up there, so there we go. All right, so I pushed all the keys again, and it looks like everything is still working, so I didn't forget to solder anything back on. So at this point, I think the keyboard is fully functional once more, and everything is clean, so hopefully it should uh, hold up for hopefully a good extended period of time. So I'm just going to put the keyboard completely back together, and then I can let my brother have it again. Oh, did I mention that this thing has been kicking around in the garage for a few years now? <laughs> so, <laughs> even though it took me a few hours to get all the switches cleaned up and everything uh yeah the keyboard has actually been uh waiting to uh, get fixed for uh longer than that so <laughs> another thing that i'm kind of glad to get off my uh list of uh, stuff to do and one more thing in case you have one of these and you're kind of wondering how it comes apart there's a total of eight screws including some that are hidden underneath the small rubber pads like on the corners and on the front and there's also one hidden underneath the label at the bottom and then there's two that are underneath the, or hidden uh, behind the uh, feet. Once you remove all of those, then you actually have to go through and pry the bottom of the case off of the top side where the uh, all the keys are. You can see that there's some small tabs that are held in with the uh, the tabs on the on the top cover. So yeah, it was a little tricky when I tried to open this up. I couldn't quite figure out how it went uh, or how it uh, opened up. And you got to make sure that this cable is in those uh, little retainer posts that it that it has in the on the uh, top side and it doesn't want to stay in place there we go reassemble it real quick and there's some tabs also that hold uh, the strain relief to the inside so once all that's back on we can just snap the bottom cover back onto the top and there we go I just got to put the screws back on and this thing will be uh, fully uh, reassembled. And there we go. Got the keyboard completely reassembled minus the small rubber feet. But I need to uh, put new double sided tape on these because uh, they're just not going to stick anymore. And for that, I'm just going to use this stuff. It's um, 3M double sided tape. It's supposed to be some really strong stuff. It says 200 MP on the label. And I'm just going to do that stuff off camera because that's just double-sided tape. It's nothing crazy, and I might need to uh, clean some of this stuff off before I apply the tape. So I'm just going to leave it here, and uh, thank you all for watching once again. I will see you guys around the bench.